and we are joined with the the legend himself, Mr. Patrick Omaella. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Not a problem. It was an honor, honestly, to be honest. Very excited to have you here, and I mean, you're you're busy, man. So I, we know we don't have you for very long. So I'm <laughs> gonna just dive right in. I'm gonna ask you some little personal questions about your about your career, and then we're gonna get into yeah, your, yeah. your opinion on the upcoming game. So without further okay. ado. What's uh for question number one? What is your favorite Derby memory in in your beautiful career with Bruce Dortmund? Uh, I've been asked that question a couple of times, and it's always the same answer. It's been uh, it's been the the season when we got the championship in 2010-11. Uh, we we won in Gelsenkirchen for the first time in a, in a bit, and it was a very uh, Emotional game, of course. It was was a was a very special win, of course. Chinji Kagawa back then scored twice. He didn't really knew what what happened then because he, he just joined the team actually. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when when we when we got back to to Dortmund, like the last mile or so, there were like fireworks everywhere, people burning stuff and and cheering and screaming and, and crying actually, and and welcoming the team back home. And that was. Uh, that was really emotional. I still got some videos of that, and and uh, whenever I think about it, it gives me goosebumps. Think, thinking back to that game, is that kind of the game that Kagawa really announced himself to uh, Borussia Dortmund? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, he had an impact right away uh, since he since he got here. But uh, that game in particular, being such an important one for for all the BBB fans and, and the family and the club itself, and I think it was quite important for for the season itself as well. It was. I, I, I would like to say it was like uh, in, in autumn somehow, so September, October, something like that. So uh, nothing was decided then, but it was the beginning of a real of a real run that we had and, 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 and real success in that season. And he was pretty much involved in, in a lot of things, but uh, that, that brace he scored in that game made him uh, probably um, um, a hero for, for a lifetime for all BVB fans. I agree. It was absolutely beautiful. So... Patrick, you have a huge connection to the fans here in Borussia Dortmund, so I just want to ask you, what does winning the Revere Derby mean to the fans of Borussia Dortmund? I mean, it, I think it changed a little bit. Still, it's it's probably, when it comes to Bundesliga games, one of the most important. There's the biggest rivalry between those clubs, but since uh, um, from 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 the, uh, let's say, from, from if you take a look at the table, the recent years... Borussia Dortmund was always, usually always, above uh, Gelsenkirchen and was always challenging Bayern Munich more for titles and, and stuff. So it, it might shift it a little bit. So there are a few more important games in the season. There's not just that single one, but it's still one of the most uh, important games. For the fans, probably the most important game since it's a big rivalry. It's, it's religion. I mean, it's only 30 kilometers uh, from Dortmund. It's, it's where they live and, and it's so close. And you either are blue in your heart or you are black and yellow as we are <laughs> and uh, in, in that area of, of Germany. And so it, it's more than just a, a sports game. It's it's more than that to many fans. But still, I think our our fans appreciate a good fight against Bayern Munich as well these days because that's our true rival for for our goals that we want to achieve. Yeah, but this and, season is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I, I find it an interesting question because I like I'm obviously being from Canada. I haven't grew yeah. up with around the German Bruce Dortmund fans, but I have people always reaching out to me and saying that Schalke is our main rivals. And for yeah. me personally, just from watching from a, a distance, I always thought, kind of thought it was Bayern because not like I thought that they were their number one rivals, but because like you said, the table made it those games a lot more important than when we played Bayern versus Schalke. So it's very interesting you saying that, uh, that you thought that Bayern has been our yeah. biggest rivals of recent weeks as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from a sporting point of view, it's been Bayern these recent years. But of course, emotionally, the most important game is against uh, against Schalke. Against Schalke. Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually been to a game live once. Very lucky to do it. But I was the question lucky I really want to ask you: What is it like playing in front of the yellow wall? Let all, all the fans at home know. <laughs> Oh man, honestly, I really miss just seeing that, not, not even being down there, but just being in the stadium because it's been been so long now. But um, it, it's one of the most uh, chilling moments in my life to walk out of that tunnel onto the pitch in front of 
on that one side, 25,000 standing there, screaming their, their lungs off, and, uh, and another almost uh, like 55,000 around the stadium. Um, it's, it's just different. It's next level. I've been to a couple of stadiums. I've been, I played at Camp Nou. I was in, the, uh, what was the name for Real Madrid's Benabeo? I was in uh, Giuseppe Miazza sta, uh, sta, uh, Stadium. So I've been I've been around in I've been to many places, but it's 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 a different kind of energy, and it's so loud and it's so vibrant, and and when they jump up and down, it it almost looks like it, it's yeah, it, it's you can't even tell that it's people because it's just one big bunch of stuff jumping <laughs> up and down, and it's it's crazy, and it, it's so much energy that's that's uh, flowing down from the stands onto the pitch. Whenever they are, they are really going for it. It's uh, it's amazing, and I, I I can't have any other words than it's 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 next level. It's it's uh, there's nothing next to it, uh, and that's what you want to hear. I mean, I went to a game at Camp Nou as well, and yeah, didn't even compete with uh, with our no. fans. But so with COVID, obviously, even making... also 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 I want to I want to add to that. I've, I've been to the uh, uh, Anfield Road as well, and you know they sing. The legendary song "You Never Walk Alone." We have that yeah. same in, in, in Borussia Dortmund. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's even louder and more special in Dortmund than it is in Anfield. I was a little bit disappointed, really, when I got there. I, 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 I don't want to step on anybody's toes here, but <laughs> given that there are more people involved doing it, it it's been, it's been different energy, and uh, that, that's, that's what I wanted to add on top of that. Yeah, I mean, I believe you 100. I mean, come on, we, it's, 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 it's the truth. But uh, speaking yeah. of that, and uh, taking a look at what COVID's done and obviously restrict fans being in the stadium, how big of an impact do you think it's going to have on Borussia Dortmund once fans are allowed back in the stadiums? Oh boy, I mean, it, it's, it would be great for, for everybody and it would be really great for the people uh, to, to finally be able to go. But of course, this, this energy is, is helping the team, especially in a season like we're having right now. It would give the team an extra boost, an extra, you know, extra power to, to go through this rough patch of, of, uh, of results that we recently had. Um, and um, it, it is missing in so many ways. It's, of course, financially too. I mean, it, it's a club, but it's still living of uh, people going, attending, buying stuff, buying tickets and so also. And that's missing out. Of course, the entertainment for the people itself. So the people in this area in Dortmund, I hear it every day. They are missing out on being being at the games and enjoying their friends and hanging around, having a beer or a, a bratwurst or whatever, you know, and watching a good game. So um, for everybody, that would mean so much that that uh, when there would be fans allowed back in the stadium, um, but mostly, of course, the team. I would I would really think that it would help the results that the team would be uh, getting. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling that out of every team in, in the world, Bruce Dortmund's got to be one of the ones that was the most affected by not having that just eruption of fans yeah. in that stadium. But sure. I mean, yeah. we had a we had a a couple of rough uh, results at home as well. So uh, it's been, I think, we had a couple of wins now back to back in our stadium too. But uh, we had some results that we just weren't used to, and uh, because it was such a you know such a. It, you couldn't get something when you were coming to Dortmund. That was the the, the usual uh, thing, and it all changed to uh, having empty stadiums and empty rows because, as I mentioned, there was just energy missing there. Yeah, I mean the fans wouldn't allow a poor result. I mean they they, they picked yeah. up the team yeah, they needed to they and would. got. They uh, yeah. But I have another question for you, Patrick. Out of uh, all mm-hmm. the titles that you've won in your career, can you give me one that, for some reason or other, was your favorite title you've ever won? It's it's got to be the first. I mean, yeah. and I mean the first real title. I, I got a tie when I was at Better Brain. I won the League Cup, but that's not really a title. So the first championship, obviously, with Borussia Dortmund, being so unexpected as well, um, yeah. because that was a a, a a different kind of team. There were some older guys like myself and Sebastian Kehl and Omar Weinfeld and Dede and all these guys, and there were some young guys as well like Schmelzer and Hummels back in the days. They were just 19, 20. and uh, it was such a, a well-organized but crazy mixed together bunch of people. And then Jurgen Klopp as a different kind of coach on the sideline. It was all, you know, it was so much fun. But we never would have expected to do that well. The first season I got here, 
we ended up just short of the international ranks, be, becoming six in the end and, and just missing out on a big opportunity for the club after a difficult period in time for, for Borussia Dortmund. Um, we missed that step. And then the second year, we actually made another step and, and became fifth and it, it led us into the Europe League. And uh, that was that was a big thing already. And then actually it felt kind of, okay, now we're there. That's, that's where we belong, you know, reaching the international ranks. But nobody would have thought that we would really go for, for the championship <laughs> title. But as I mentioned, early in that season, everything came together. Addition of players like Kagawa, uh, um, Mario Götze having the time of his life as well. And, and these young talents mixed with us older guys, it, it all came together perfectly. And in the end, um, it made just fun. And we, we looked back at the season and said, did we just do that, really? Did we just won the, the league by having fun, you know, and enjoying ourselves? <laughs> it's crazy. It's ridiculous. And that, that, that must be the, the best thing. In, like, besides the birth of my children, that's probably the best thing in, in life that ever happened to me. Uh, well, that's awesome. Um, that's about, honestly, from Canada, watching all the way from North America was about the year I started uh, really following your guys' team in year in, year out. And uh, I just have a little question from, from me, because following that team yeah. the last couple of seasons for, for Mario Goetz's development, what was it like playing with him for those two years where you guys won the back-to-back -back titles? You know, people ask me always, well, who was the, the, the best guy, the best player you ever played with and, and trained with. And I honestly have to say Mario Götze because he came up, he was 17 years old. He was a little, you know, bothered with, with injuries a little bit. So it took a couple of, you know, a couple of months really to, to get adapted to the first team. I mean, 17 back at that time was really, really young. Nowadays, you have 16-year-old players and they seem to be there forever already. But, um, and, and Gio Reyna and, you know, those guys, they, they feel so comfortable in that surrounding. But it wasn't that it wasn't that way back then, but he was so clever. He was really calm and he was really quiet, actually. But he played on my side, so I helped him out a little bit, you know, defensively. I helped him on the pitch, what to do, when to, you know, just let loose and when to, you know, rather focus and and, and not uh, uh, um, and not do too much. But um, he learned so fast and the things he could do with the ball, it was uh, almost ridiculous sometimes in, in practice what, what you would see. And uh, it was fantastic to, to, to play alongside him. That's that's amazing because yeah, I have such good and fond memories of of Goodson during those two seasons. So yeah. it's very cool hearing you say how obviously talented and what generational talent he was back then. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I do have a question for you from from Dennis though. So I mm -hmm. don't know the the background of this, but when will you be doing your first fishing stream? My first fishing what stream? Stream. Your first fishing <laughs> okay. stream. I don't know if that's an inside yeah. joke. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of fishing. You know, I, I really like to go fishing, and uh, I did a couple of uh, uh, YouTube clips with some YouTubers that do fishing, and I went with them. I went to Sweden or, or you know Denmark or where, all over the place, uh, Netherlands and stuff. So I really love fishing. I'm actually I I haven't I've been fishing once in the last twelve months because of uh, the pandemic and stuff. And it didn't work out. And there was actually no no contact. So I'm really, I'm really, you know, I, I want to go fishing again. But my schedule is a little tight. Still, the pandemic is around. But yeah. um, I was I was on the edge actually of having a couple of fishing shows uh, for for German television and uh, for YouTube as well. But you know, being involved with Borussia Dortmund with the Bundesliga and stuff. So I have to figure out what really works. And, and so it's still a hobby, but um, I, I'm pretty sure whenever I find a little bit of time and it's it's um, it's uh, easy to do again, then I, I will be right back on the water and do some fishing and I will load up a clip of that uh, onto YouTube. That's that's for sure. You'll find it. You'll find it. Hey, you chose to hang out with me instead of fishing. I, I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> but to, to get into the game stuff, so I asked you a lot of personal yeah. stuff. So looking yeah. at today's game. Uh, the first question I want to ask you is, what is the most important thing Brucey Dortmund need to do to get a victory today? Fight. It's it's going to be a fight. Uh, you can't win this one with, you know, playing it beautiful and, 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 and being nice and being fancy on the stuff. You have to, you know, uh, add the work to it. You have to add the grind to it. You got to hustle because that's what they're going to do. I mean, yeah. see, they see their season is, is really is really not going anywhere and they, they need every bit of point they can get to survive and that's how they're going to come up uh, come out on the pitch 
they're going to have the knife between their teeth and they're going to scratch and bite and, and hit and you know and you can't allow yourself to get involved in, in any side things you know like arguing and stuff but you have to adapt and you have to bring the fight too and then on top of that you can add your quality and your fanciness and all that nutmegs and, and all that <laughs> stuff and then obviously and then it's then it's a, a fair thing to say we're the favorite and we're going to win this one but we if we don't match the fight and it's going to be a tough, tough night today. Yep, and it's what these rivalries are all about. If there's it's not as straightforward yeah. as it may seem. But uh, speaking yeah. of quality, when you're keeping one special eye on a Brucey e. Dortmund player tonight, which one are you keep an eye on? There's no one special player. I mean, of course, we have players that score, and we have players that deliver more, and we have players they they do the duty back back in defense. But the whole team needs to be on point tonight. We need Erling Haaland to score. We need Jaden Sancho to deliver. We need, you know, Mark Royce to be a real captain and show the team where uh, where to go. We need Mats Hummels to have a fantastic game alongside his, his fellow teammates back in defense. And, of course, whoever might end up being in, in goal, I don't know if it's Berkey today or Hitz, he has to have a good day too because we need a full team uh, uh, effort to, to win this one. And it's an important one because you had a fantastic game midweek in, in Champions League against Sevilla with a pretty good result for the for the second leg. But still, that's all not worth really much if you, you know, turn around and lose this one in the Bundesliga to, to lose focus of, of the aims you have for, for the end of the season. Yep, absolutely. You heard it here first. It's a, it's a team effort today and uh, I, I totally agree. But I'm going to get to the tactical version of it. As you may have noticed in the Sevilla game, we saw a brand new change of shape. We saw a new formation that looked like a 4-3-2-1. Do you have any thoughts on that? And how do you think it'll match up today against Schalke if we go with that formation? I mean, it's. I think it's a. It's it's fair if you if you look at the opponent and 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 if if it's a if it's a strong team and you might figure out a way of dealing with things easier defensively and you change your lineup to it. That should be fine with with everybody on the pitch because it helps the team actually to you know to have an easy approach on things um if you're the favorite if you're the stronger team you might focus a little bit more on yourself and not change too much tactically so i think it was very well uh, um uh, analyzed actually the the Sevilla team and and the the measures that Edi Terzic and his team took were working pretty good so it, it was a great job Schalke is a different thing. Um, Schalke will not bring the game to you. They, they're going to wait, probably. Even though they're playing at home, they're going to bring the fight, but they don't want to bring the game to you. They want to let you play and then find weaknesses. So it's going to be a different approach. That's why I don't think we, we will see the same tactical lineups. We will see maybe uh, almost the same names, but in, in, in more usual style of play that, we, uh, that we've seen uh, compared to what we've seen in Sevilla. Yeah, and I, I think the way the game works so well in Sevilla is because we plugged another midfielder into that, yeah. into that midfield for a three-man midfield. Yeah. It was able to obviously break up the play a little bit. And I, I do agree that Schalke is obviously a very different team to Sevilla. So yeah. I guess your opinion on today's formation would be something of a 4-2-3-1? Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see that. Um, but, you know, whatever Schalke does, if, if it's not working, whatever lineup we, we are adding, because are just going to pick... Be flexible, you know, switch it up. You have the players on the pitch that can play in different systems that's mostly just, you know, change one position. It's a whole different setup. And uh, the team is capable of doing that. So be open for that as well. But I think to start in a, in a, in a, in a formation that you're really used to would give you the best, probable feel, uh, the best possible feeling. Yeah, and that's why it was so impressive, seeing the way that we change shape against Sevilla and obviously get such a good result. But... Talking yeah. about that result, we saw an exceptional performance from Dehoud. How impressive was that performance for you? Yeah, of course he was. Uh, he was very, you know, present in that game, and he's somebody actually that I see a lot uh, uh, trying from outside of the box, which our team doesn't so much. To be fair, you know, they're not maybe Axel Witzel sometimes does, but. Not, not a lot of players from Borussia Dortmund try from outside of the box because it's not their style of play. Even Erling Haaland wants to, you know, enter the box and then uh, 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 strike or finish. And uh, to ha to see that, I mean, we all know what he's capable of. He's he's running a lot. He's you know very technical with the ball, um, and he can get physical too. 
And on top of that, he's somebody who tries from, from, from range. And I think all of that we saw in this game and all of that was important because Sevilla has a team that defends and it makes the, 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 the rooms really tight whenever they come closer to their own goal. So it was a right approach. It was the right kind of guy for the right kind of job. And I mean, it was just well organized and well executed in the end. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it. You said exactly what I would have. I think he's a very technically gifted player. I thought he pressed better than anybody else in the pitch. Not that you know everyone else didn't press, yeah. but his pressing game was unbelievable. And, of course, he can hit him from range. But we got you for about one more minute here, Patrick. So the final question, just for the neutrals potentially watching, is what one player on Schalke would you want to... Bruce Dorman thinks they should keep an eye on tonight. What one player? For, ah, I mean, it's not not so easy. I would I would name two actually, I, because I really think that Matthew Hopper is a, is a is an interesting player. Uh, he really brings talent. He he just you can tell that he's still young, and for him, uh, being able to play in that team is fantastic, and he really enjoys it. And it's it's different with the other kind of players because they feel a different kind of p- uh, pressure there. Um, but you you see that he's having fun and he just wants to sh- score goals and stuff and he's all over the pitch you know deep into midfield left wing right wing all all over the pitch and pitch and pitch, working hard so he's, he will be really active probably and the other one um, I don't know the lineups yet actually but if I mean how he plays he's he's yeah. always dangerous he's a technical player he's he's capable of deciding uh, being the decisive player of, of a game he can you know can do so much with the ball and help his team be really creative so he's another another player i would uh, i would watch tonight if he plays absolutely and those are probably the two names i would have said as well so patrick i took a lot of your time today we really appreciate you coming <laughs> on here for the uh, for a little background about your guys' career and of course the uh, the game today and we really really appreciate it so Thank you again, Patrick. And anything else you want to say before you head off, you can welcome to say it. Oh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. And again, uh, I wish all of our BBB fans out there a, a fantastic night, a fantastic game, actually. And I hope it's going to be another win that will get us closer to our goals uh, towards the end of the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Patrick. Great stuff. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Have fun. <laughs>